Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tiano the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. As we are finishing out this portion of Ibuka Masaru's campaign, in which we're going down with this persistence path, and then eventually the next episode where we're going to spend a long time trying to get to the reconciliation path. So I read this one last time. We've got some comms to go through too, but... Uh, let's see, our government reinforced, thank goodness. So the government of our state and its legislative council for all their manifest inefficiencies and inherent design flaws managed to survive the prospect of complete collapse and emerge in a more or less functional state. But we, but we do well to remember that we could not have happened, that could not have happened without Fujitsu's well-deserved dominance. As a new era sets in, it's time for the chief executive, and it's time to check in on the state of the government. While he's at it, he'll want to reaffirm to the rest of the Japanese governing class of Guangdong that Fujitsu will, as always, remain the sole pillar upon which it can rest for support. So... I'll get spring cleaning as well. And... Ibuka spent so long cooped up inside the government complex that he forgot what the outside world looked like. If it is his own little train carriage, just Guangdong passed through heck and heck and back. Though he wondered how much more comfortable his own ride had been, but that mattered no more. The streets of Koshu beckoned, they were beautiful. Doubtlessly, the ride still left their mark in the city as he walked through the morning sunshine. Every other treaty pass seemed to have crews clearing rubble or scaffolding and enveloping high rises for impoverished redevelopment. And Cordon still blocked off much of the city, but this was all healthy. Signs of growth, improvement. Things may be slightly broken, but there are obvious indications that the problems were being paid attention to and properly dealt with. And after all, wasn't that all he ever wanted? Already the past was moving far behind him, and yesterday's future was here. Soon to be tomorrow's antiquity. The book looked to the sky. For once, the day was clear. The sky opened, and the shun sun shone over Guangdong. Admittedly, a formless, undirected, unharnessed light. But yet one brimming with infinite potential to be yet realized. Harnessed more and more with each passing day. Soon, the sun was set once more, and Koshu's great collage of possibilities would unveil itself once more. A million leading lights to all that could, should, must be. Nature's light may be miraculous, but the light of civilization was revelatory. There's so much to do, of course, and so much now that could be done. Guangdong and Ibuka himself had both answered hard questions about themselves and where they were heading. He just hoped that he'd made the right decision. Feeling a sudden onset of heaviness, Ibuka stifled a yawn and decided to head home. The city may never sleep, but an old man needs his rest. <clears throat> our, the, our brightest minds unscathed. F the future will outlive us. Fujitsu will outlive us. And who in their right mind can forget about the brilliant men of Fujitsu, the pioneers of the new technological order, bright lights of the new electric golden age? Even the daggers of hate and envy were pointing at them from every direction during the world historical disaster that was the oil crisis. They persisted in their labors. Heck burn and the high water churn, but the Fujitsu work kept working, kept innovating. Not even the myriads of rioters could stop them. As Guangdong moves on from the riots and its prior history more generally, Fujitsu, we need to find the right way to put these brilliant people to use so as to ensure that we can continue innovating for all eternity. The Cloister, dear John, I hope you're doing well, and that this letter does reach you. Even uh, with the resources available to me, I was unable to find the exact location of your de uh, detention and forced to send this letter through a chain of intermediaries. With luck, one day electronic mail will become sophisticated enough and common enough to avoid such a Byzantine process. But until then, we this shall have to suffice. Our parents are doing well, though they may they miss you greatly. Now that I hold a permanent position within Fujitsu, I've been able to send back enough money for them to live in a more pleasant residential facility. Additionally, your sister's path to college is almost likely secure. I am certain that we will both be extremely proud of her no matter what she chooses to study. I just wish you had not made the mistakes which placed you in prison so that you could be all part of this. If you'd simply known what mattered, we would remain a whole family. It's clear that you have a way with people, something which could have been put to far better use, but maybe this is for the best. You've always been consumed by your anger, and this has led to you to destroy things rather than build them, and these, sadly, are the consequences. I have no idea if you, or if or when you may be released, but I can only hope that if you do, the rest of your days will be put towards more productive ends. I'll do my best to remain in touch with this letter meets its destination. But my schedule is busy, and correspondence may be infrequent, perhaps. You may read about me in the papers before them, but I can't guarantee you'll recognize the name, your brother, hey. Our citizens to reinvigorate him. The people must embrace the future, kicking and screaming if they must. Historians and sociologists will argue about the causes and effects of the Guangdong rise for decades, but they, as a populace itself, have all clearly learned one major thing from this event and its aftermath. What is that lesson, you ask? Is that a model of excellence works, even in the face of crisis, and that not even some petty rabble rousers can shake it off its foundations? The truth that has at last been etched into the hearts of all Guangdong's people. In this new age, whether or not they were part of the riding rabble, they will see no reason not to happily abide by it, though working ceaselessly towards their very best forevermore. And thus, fellow representatives, obsession. Continued Ibuka. Obsession with infighting, obsession with insular matters that have no relevance whatsoever to solving the problems at hand. All of them deficiencies, innate to the very legislature. Embodied by one census ordinance after another, I was forced to draft through my tenure. <clears throat> he paused and let the cold seep into the hall. 
And there you were, in our darkest hour, too busy bickering and blaming me for a decision I made years ago to do what should need to be done. I trusted every person currently seated in this hall to shoulder the burdens of our nation equally and without exemption, and you repay me the farce. Whatever lesson from the riots, you will fly over your heads just as you suited it. Surprisingly, or un perhaps unsurprisingly, no one made a sound. Good as for me. I'm something of an obsessive person myself, as you probably already know. The head of humor left his head as soon as it came. Focus, results, that knowing what's best for everyone is sticking to it. Finding tasks that actually matter and trusting the right people to accomplish them with you, but, you know, on second thought, maybe I've been wrong this whole time. And then he found his gaze crashing to Morita. Ibuka knew that look. The trembling eyelids, the drooping mouth corners, and the look they say you're supposed to give a friend when they're crossing the eye line, going down a path you can no longer follow, or whatever. If this was true, it showed up on Morita's face, now all of times made even less sense. By standards, Ibuka crossed the line years ago. Long, or lo long ago. If it could cross, or could even make a long overdue apology right here and now, in front of 98 pairs of silent, silent startled eyes, there's just no point, was there? It's because you can only trust people so many times until they start letting you down. And I'm all out of trust, so. Guangdong Future Act. 1. Compulsory subordination of all representatives of the Legislative Council of the City of Guangdong, present and future, to the Fujitsu Limited Registries. Failure to comply with removal from the legislature. 2. Indefinite suspension of ordinances as a legislative mechanism, only preserving direct edicts from the Office of the Chief Executive of the State of Guangdong available for the customary deliberation of the Executive Council. Final discretionary powers over such edicts remain reserved for the Chief Executive only. So, over all that, but one of the council was, with the torches of the people burning Guangdong, Chief Executive Ibuka, it says to put down the parasites from destroying his world once for all. And the person also says, I seriously, I have to agree with you that dealing with the GFT and CCL is just a pain in the butt. Yeah. I'll talk about it a little bit more in just a little bit. I'll get through some more focuses first. Yeah. Omad Ditto. The uh, hats flew into the air and the segment of Wise Life with it. <clears throat> that was it then. She was a woman now, and the future lay ahead. Whatever the future may be, uh, many of her friends were generally having an easier time of things. The answer to the future would be maid or factory worker or something along those lines. But for those like herself who had graduated at the top of her class, the future was open, uh, paralyzingly so. As if they had sensed such weakness, a wave of recruiters had descended like vultures on the graduating students after the ceremony, from left to right, front to back, all Fujitsu, as if there would be any doubt about why. Even among the honor roll, many of them started to be lining directly towards her, handing her leaflet upon leaflet. Did Hay put them up to this, she thought, or did they just know her regardless? Everyone uh, knows of her famous brother, the one that had been in the papers all those times. One way or another, she doubted that she did deserve the attention. She had done well in school, but she knew she was far away from another Hay. Then again, people rarely got what they deserve, good or bad. On the one hand, she could look at all hey, at all hey, did she? But then again, Chum, no, she couldn't think about that. Nor do anything for her eldest brother. Not yet, anyway. Fortune and possibly nepotism had smiled upon her. And the leaflets and numbers she held in front of her, a hundred potential features stood in front of her. Whatever it may be, her story was about to begin. And so the light sh shines on. Yasuda, Matsuzawa, Yusuzuki. These names and others were once great powers and influence holders in the state of Guangdong. They were known for their power and influence, but also for their inability to innovate in the faces of a uh, face of changes in the world. But now, with the passage of time, the rise of Chief Executive Ibukamasaru, <clears throat> those influences are no more, more relics of the past. Freed at last from the old, uninnovative, and incompetent, incompetent reality, it recovered, strengthened, and prepared Guangdong is at last ready to reach a new stage and its march forward. Though we may have compromised on some matters, and all from others, on others, the end result is won. Guangdong, with all of our efforts, all of Fujitsu's efforts, and under Ibuka's vision, is resplendent with technological might, and is at last place under the claim to make the title of the jewel on the Pearl River. Here in 72, and is the fruit of Ibuka Master's labors, a new Guangdong, of also the engineer Citadel, premium leather. The chair felt luxurious, comfortable, but more than that, it felt right. A destined final point after a long journey, the place Yoshiko was always meant to end up. One that carried a journey of its own, with responsibilities to match, but there's a little pointing, a little point thinking of them right now. It suits you, said the chair's previous occupant, standing across the desk, wearing a sad smile. I'm just so sorry it happened this way, Mr. Takasaki, she said. Don't worry, it was a mutual thing. This town's just not suited for people like me anymore, it seems. It was time for a change anyways. Where are you gonna go now? Back to Tokyo, I think I still have contacts here. Maybe somewhere more provincial. I don't think I want to see this amount of neon for a very long time. Well, Yoshiko said, rising, take care. You too. They bowed, and Takasaki walked out for the final time, leaving Yoshiko to sink into her own reward. She felt bad for the man, truly, but he was another line. Uh, and a persistent pattern of men in her life who just couldn't persist. Her father chose death instead of, instead of a new reality. And if that man had the courage to continue holding her hostage in the face of police guns, maybe he would have gotten whatever it was he wanted. But when the going became tough, and they chose to shrink back and gave up. But she had not, and now she had a whole organization behind her. A ground tool of her own expression. She turned her nameplate around in her hands and f felt a new recognition of what it read. Yasukawa, that title was given and now owned completely. Are you proud father or jealous? What remains? The crunching of shattered glass echoed throughout the facility. And within Yamauchi's ears, he walked through the remnants of his endeavor. Hardly a single device had managed to survive both the destructive riot and the brutal crackdown. 
While processors had been crushed, the police didn't really seem particularly concerned about the safety of his property. The executive gazed numbly at the scene, buffeted by the cold morning air. Taking his seat, he began to think, sure, things seem to be bad, but they could always get better. He had been through hard times before. He just needed a little more time to get back on his feet, and then he could get back to work, right? A loud bang jolted young out out of his chair as one of the great piles of junk collapsed under its weight and scattered itself across the factory floor. There'd be no second chance, he realized. His debt grew bigger every passing day, and his banks wouldn't take reassurances and promises in lieu of payments anymore. Even worse, Fujitsu decided to pull support from his company almost immediately after the destruction of his facility cited in the recent incident as evidence of his non-viability in the competitive environment of the nation. With a sigh, Yamauchi stood to leave the devastated warehouse. The building was nothing more than a rotting remnant of his ambition, waiting silently to be swept away in favor of the new. The image of his bright and hopeful beginnings faded from his mind, replaced by the barren reality. There was no hope for him here, not anymore. And for the speaking of greatness, our chief executive, Ibuka, was never one to sit down quietly and accept whatever he was given to be be it good or bad. We have all heard him say time and time again that Guangdong cannot limit itself to being the brightest technological beacon of the co-prosperity sphere. No. He says our calling is greater than that. Sometime back, in fact, our esteemed chief executive's rhetoric reached a new height. No, it's not enough. We must prove once and for all that we're in the right. We have no need for slave labor. As the madman in the Einheit's pact professor, nor foolish overemphasis on the civil liberties and equality like the bleeding hearts of the OFM. No, by meritocracy and innovation, we shall benefit and shine upon all mankind and pass the best that the Westerners and anyone else has to offer. As we finally approach our rightful place in the global limelight, the other peoples of this beautiful, tormented earth will see the fruits of our intellect. They'll be beholden the results of your adherence to my vision has brought us. Then they will sit down and learn. From the Pearl River Delta shines the future of the world. Ah, the Guangdong Future Act passes. They said the LED 7 segmented tally hit 100 and, and the pre recorded voice announced his triumph. Ibuka gave himself a smile and nothing more. Fellow representatives, he cocked his chin up, staring at the sea of suits in the hollow faces below and began, I'd like to thank you all. For all for a collective first step in securing the integrity of our nation. And the last words had barely left his mouth when Marita darted to his feet again. Ibuka watched as his mouth burst open as if to utter curses, obscenity, something, but this time that something never came. Greeting Ibuka this time was only silence and a pair of eyelids that had stopped trembling, showing him the thing swirling and flickering under underneath in all its glory. Not despair, not even anger, only the endless void. Then Akeo closed his eyes, turned to the gate, and slowly walked across the mobile floor in one minute that stretched down into a hundred. He stopped as the frost-covered revolving door swallowed him whole, jet black hair floating in the wind, or winter breeze of February Tokyo. There was not another word, not another look back, as he bid his silent farewell to the friend to what was once Tokyo Telecommunications forever. And he booked a master watch, an ice statue standing in the cold. Passing is given his following effects. No longer shall I let go of and the prize ordinances stand in my way. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh. We control everything. As we should. But no, I know one of the comments was from apparently the devs. Since you're very critical uh, of the Guangdong riot mechanics, uh, I should let you know that when you play Satachi, no matter what path you decide to go down, will not negotiate with riders and that. Um, Ibuka's reconciliation path does let you negotiate with them, which I would totally understand that. You with Hitachi, you definitely cannot negotiate, you have to dismantle them. Um, and that being said, we, the dev team, appreciate your playthroughs at Guangdong to continue to fix you in every way we can. Honestly, like, the devs are amazing. Like, I, I bitch and moan a whole bunch. Like, I, I apologize. You know, every time I read comments like that, I'm like, I feel bad. I, as I should. But, like, it's my fault for saying, you know, all that stuff in the last episode. But, like, in the last episode, like, I spent so long trying to figure it out because I kept I having the save at the beginning of whenever you dismantle like the GFT you know the tradesmen but uh I at the beginning of every investigation it always led to the same results no matter what no matter what especially when I made a save like I'd always use like top 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 and then top 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 bottom and then top top bottom top top so every single time I did it like I'd always get the same exact results I had never changed because I looked in the game files actually here and like there's like up to 70 different events I got like 15 max so that's what frustrated the living heck out of me in the last episode because I get the same results over and over and over and I knew there were more results but just the game wouldn't push onwards to the other one even though I was trying all sorts of different stuff so that's why I got really really frustrated and I had to use consequence in the last episode so I apologize to the devs they do a really fantastic job are they perfect no but I'm, neither am I I'm absolutely not perfect so I apologize to the devs and whatnot they they do a, in general a, an amazing job with this mod so no matter how frustrated I get, I always think that they do a, generally a pretty awesome job, especially in TNO. The TNO devs do a fantastic job. But, see what a scourge. On a fine day in Hong Kong, in the prison, Stanley Ho put his head in his hands and bit off curses under his breath. Such a reaction made sense, for he and all his fellow respectable businessmen had just been stricken with a terrible blow from which he could not recover no matter how much Marita or Lee tried to stop him. Or help him. 
That damn Macau at noon. Local time, the last Macau's casinos, one owned by Stanley Ho no less, was blown up to be replaced by yet another Fujitsu office industrial building. With that toppling, the backbone of Guangdong's gambling industry was torn out in solemn, dramatic order. More lucky gambling magnates ended up just being driven out of the business with nowhere to go and nobody to turn to. Others less fortunate, such as Stanley Ho himself, ended up in jail. Yet even as Stanley plunged into the deepest slow of despond that he had ever known, he overheard something that brought a maniac smile to his face. For in Koshu, at half past noon in little time, local time, a hitherto, hitherto unprecedented drug sweep was begun, and it was spread like a metastasizing cancer. All kinds of controlled substances were targeted without mercy, and with the ruthless efficiency that Guangdong had accepted was an inevitable con con contaminant of uh, Fujitsu rule. But that was not what stood out to the people that observed it. No, what stood out was that Yokozawa were singled out to be grabbed by the long arm of Ibuka's blue caps. Yokozawa was terrified out of his mind, but he knew that he was powerless. All he could do was clench his teeth and bite his time, but he wondered whether there was any time left. And in the meantime, though through his angry tears, Stanley Ho smiled. All are punished across the land. The numbers, be that financial, production, manpower, anything else, continually increase all thanks to Guangdong's brilliance and Ibuka's vision. At last, we were free to leave the brutish, backwards industrial heckle that was Guangdong behind, but it seems that Manchukuo is no longer our only rival in the sphere. The Republic of China, the motherland of Guangdong, has begun a frantically, frankly admirable process of modernization. Their five modernizations seem to be equipped, have equipped them to start up firms and initiatives of their own, but it matters not. Whatever challenges or opportunities the land to the north brings, they will only prove Ibuka's point that Guangdong that we build is unmatched in this technological power and might. No longer we measure ourselves against Itzing again, against. Uh, instead, we'll pay attention to Nanjing and Shanghai. Just can't get it right. The monotonous buzz of the TV set went on, but Hayashi Kozen's ears remain clear. There's a sigh from five meters away, a fresh break from the walls and sobs that had come to clog this dusty road. Three middle-aged men in rags shuffled along a stream of hundreds, one shooting him a distasteful glance, but nothing more. At least this one didn't matter, mutter traitor under his breath. Hayashi might as well let it slide. Here he was again, back in the place where he was raised, or rather the Shenzhen Research and Digital Accessories Park, had the blueprint propping up his desk three days ago had anything to say. One chunk of line across his neighboring Hong Kong had Hmong dozen poised to supplement his financial eminence with sheer technological might as part of the chief executive's recent initiative to go beyond the three pearls, which in Ibuka's dictionary naturally meant more bulldozers, more temporary tenements, and more human displacement befall in this tiny fishing village he once called home. The very side of the blueprint, for all intents and purposes, should have wedged a knife into his heart, but somehow didn't, and that's okay. As gaze careened towards a Hong Kong towards a place that buried a life he had once had. A plain Chinese man with a plain briefcase thinking all he could swim against the current. The years that followed had rinsed the delusion out of him that Ibuka Masaru, the raging torrent that he was, blasted it clean away. It's not often that you get to decide what happens to you or even anyone you care about sometime. You can only make do with what you have. Paychecks, recognition, your own place in the society of artifice, the Bahunya, badge on your cap and on your shoulder gleaming under the sunlight. For a second, Ma and Uncle's last faces flashed among the crowd. Lam Hyun soon opened his mouth until Officer C L C zero four nine shook his head and slammed it shut. Sometimes there are things you just just have to let go, and that's okay. I'll be the guard dog for all your favorite dreams. <coughs> the leading light. And uh, oh, look at that. Oh, well, I guess we're well, Ikora Ikora. And there goes our Japanese pick again. Squealing how he wants to be the best for his factory, he sits on his workers with his fat poor sign. Uh, uh, but we're being exploited into the gosh darn ground here. Our health is in the crapper, and yet here you are whining and griping about some quota? Sure, fire away all you want, and Gray, what do you know? One slip up away from this quota, I'll get run out of business in the stupid mite grinder. Well, that son of a gun and Koshu sharpens the blades and makes the darn machine run faster. The fight between the labor and the manager dragged on and on past that, and then slowly there was just nothing more to say. Silence fell upon them both in the background. They live in Fujitsu billboards praising Ibuka and their wearers. At the same time, the Fujitsu loudspeaker began to blare. While, it's, it's, while it, what it said made no difference, for the terrible, despair-inducing realization came to them both at the same time. Guangdong did not care. No one did. They could kill one another right there and then there, but the cameras whirling right around the corner remained, or reminded them that neither of them nor their ethnic squabbles mattered to Ibuka Masu, who had sole control over their lives and final fates. All the were lifeless pieces on a circuit board upon which the sigil of three pearls would shine for all eternity. And from that time, the labor and manager fought far less. Ibuka o Tateo. The leading light. You'd have to thought they would have gotten used to it by now, thought Ibuka, in the process of glad handling the assembled international visitors, especially the Mexicans. They love showing up for these expos for whatever reason. Were they still dealing with that insurgency? Who was the new president again? Tokyo had been sending him reports on Mexico for years about their geopolitical importance, political history, and important figures, all of that. He'd been far too busy to read them in, in any sort of detail, but that hardly seemed to matter. If you build it, they'll come. Nations like Mexico brought forth most of the bank customers, those who looked up to Fujitsu Sari. Uh, uh, Guangdong's latest range of gadgets with white eyes and bulging wallets, those who lag behind the, the bleeding edge and between the grasp of superpowers. Those who sought to leapfrog their way towards the pinnacle of innovation, and for as long as it was required, Guangdong would stand and greet him. 
but the book had more than just paying customers to cater to this, to this day. The Germans and American delegations paced around the edges of the floor, offering tepid congratulations and compliments, trying not to look at one another, but if they bought something, their money was as good as anyone's. But that was not the point. The technological march of the sphere was unstoppable, and they'd be made to understand this and spread this panic understanding of their leaders. The more panic generated, the more Tokyo would invest, and it seemed like their investments would be large indeed. There were quite some curious absences this year. No Chinese visitors, for one. Many questions were raised about what had happened to the rest of the five companies, given Fujitsu's totalizing, totalizing presence on the convention floor. For a moment, Ibuko wondered what Morita might have contributed. Had he been invited, or even seen a Lenko for months? But no, nothing, though. There was no point of ever thinking of him again. He'd make a decision long ago, and chose, poor, chose poorly. The future leaves no space for the past. Upon our hearts. Everything is going back into motion. The economy stabilizes. The people at last calm down. The past is further and further away from us like coaching in the rear view mirror as we drive south to Hong Kong or north of the frontier. But after this, we can take a moment to reflect on our history before we fully leave it behind. Our founding, the heirs of Suzuki and his predecessors. The struggles that our chief executive went through to build up the state of Guangdong of today. True Guangdong remains a mere patch of land close to the South China Sea, channeled in by warlords and revolutionaries to the north and the unmoving waters to our south. But we have never been the sort of people to allow ourselves to be bogged down by physical limits. We forward took a broken legacy in the hand and made it new, surpassing even the highest side of the old. We have every right to take pride in that and every reason to use it to make Guangdong even greater than it already is. Look upon your creation and tell me what you see. I peek outside. I dig it that external secretary Kamai was once again unable and willing to show his sorry hide. The book asked the aides, who all quietly nodded. Very well, we shall simply go ahead without him. Proceed. He beckoned to one of the aides closest to him, holding a clipboard. Clipboard. Uh, first, the king has made a formal protest to Tokyo concerning the desperate amount of investments Guangdong receives compared to Manchu. Unimportant, said Manch uh, Ibuka. Though relevant prattlings of the envious and incompetent, if they had spent their time researching on something, <clears throat> Uh, other than library and arraignments for the sake of fake aristocracy all those years, they would be receiving more. Next. Well, uh, I'm sure as you're aware, it's another eight-step forward. The Republic of China has been ins issuing protests concerning the purported exploitation of the Chinese citizens for some time now, from all sorts of different ministries and government organizations, also. I'll go a list right here. He handed the clipboard over to Ibuka. Ibuka skimmed through the papers for a moment and then put him down. I see nothing new here. He said, Frankly, I'm unsure what Nanjing expects from us. Our Chinese citizens hold much greater opportunities than those in the Republic, and I encourage them to make better use of their own population. Next. Knowing better than Chan Jibuka, the aides changed topic, even as the subject of China continued to eat away to Ibuka ten years ago. Perhaps his assessment would have been true, but he knew better than anyone. A lot of, could change in that time, and after all, he had underestimated the issues before that would require special attention, away from prying eyes. Can't overlook the small details and across the seas. Oh, great Japan, our fair home man, are the originator of our existence, the chain in which our fates were once tied until the coming of Ibuka Masaru. No longer shall we subordinate ourselves, sub subordinate ourselves to you as we march into the brave new world under that you have built. Under our honored chief executive, you, we have surpassed you, O Japan, even as you once surpassed the Europeans and Chinese, when we forged our own destiny. We no need of your help, then we innovated and created glorious things unheard of in human history, and we do not require your assistance. O oh, our brethren, we thank you for your love and kindness to us. We salute and honor you as our compatriots, but now, here of you have ears. We're no longer your servants or tributaries. Granted, we will fulfill our duties to you as the, and to the emperor. We'll do our duty for the cause of Pan-Asianism. But let us be clear, it'll only be on our terms, not yours, and this eternity we've always known anew. We've known anew. Infinity and beyond. No. Infinity. Had such many book as Q, when his 1959 self had drafted a new logo on the drawing board for the behemoth soon to be rechristened as Fujitsu Limited. And the end result was just that. A simple yet elegant infinity symbol. Infinite possibilities. Infinite ambitions for himself and his company for whatever place, whatever you make of it. Which is why, as he booked a suit under the sunlight and watched the cobalt blue insignia hoisted to the top of the government complex, a chuckle of irony escaped his mouth. He dreamt of infinity, alas. Reality. It doesn't really work that way. Some people will never see infinity, no matter how the books pump data into them. Some people would always rather want their true Guangdong smeared with nauseating squalor. They call authentic life, no matter how far uh, life itself had evolved past them. Well, too little too late for that. Their beloved Guangdong might as well have died back in 38 with a cannon fire blared first across Gu Gu Guangzhou sky, and now I can say that with all confidence to the world, good riddance. With the Fujitsu insignia, the infinity symbol doubles as a Mobius strip. No matter how far as you go along its surface, you always end up back at the same spot. No matter how you try to understand, accommodate, and pander to those also pitiful downtrodden, they always find a way to bite your feeding ham. They still rather waste ink and paper on some manifesto on how to sit in piles of their own crap than actually take a single step out of it. Imbeciles will always be imbeciles, the best they deserve is the bottom of a sewer anyways, so why bother? He took one more look at the edifice and moved on. If nothing else, I suppose he got a little yet more in touch with himself, a little closer to what it meant to be alive. When you claw your way through this world and you find yourself around all those people, you don't want them to thrive, flourish, and get away with it all. You want them gone. Against coming night. How high we've ascended, atop the zenith of truth, how far we've journeyed as we part the eons past. But alas, devious are the machinations of our cosmos, whispers against our border. Ooh, look at Phil Hart. Uh, tellings of conflict, aggression, a cataclysmic schemes already afoot. Storm clouds converge, swirling and roar across the East China Sea, and all they're all embracing darkness shrouding the skies, no matter our wishes, no matter all of our endeavors, there are things that remain beyond our control, there always are. Onwards we strive, for there's only the future ahead of us, a neon light in the darkness, against threats both within and without. May Fujitsu's glory shine forever, and a ragged insomnia as we read. Yes, Minister. 
I am simply afraid that it would not be profitable to invest further into the defense sector this time. As you are no doubt aware, we do not hold a standing army, and as such, there is little justification for the involved costs. I am more than aware of your special position in the sphere, Prime Minister. I am, after all, standing in the center of Koshu rather than the center of Tokyo. But you appear to be hyper-focused upon Guangdong's geographical position within the sphere. While I am concerned for its economic position, where I re to grant your request, this economic viability will be diminishing the sphere with us. Once again, my answer is no. You seem to forget, Prime Minister, that I am the head of a sovereign nation and my fellow member of the East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. Guangdong is no longer a mere asset of Japan, and I am not your employee, not your underling. I intend to contribute to the sphere's interest in a matter that stands in line with the national interest of Guangdong. After all I've done for you, you dare to insinuate? Fine, the Chief Executive's office will see what action can be taken. But we do not expect to perform this favor without compensation. Remember that. Goodbye, Prime Minister. Goodbye. Hey, the convies. Well, it's, it's it's kind of there. It's it's <coughs> it's getting there. Don't worry about the debt. Yeah, don't worry about it. Corruption, not right now. Ragged insomnia. The papers were before him, and of course, real beyond a, uh, a doubt, so was the pen in his hand. Uh, the chair against his back, and the Koshu skyline outside his window sparkling as they always had. Physically, he was seated comfortably within the office of the chief executive, indeed, but his heart felt like it was in free fall. And it would have been so much better if it was just about Guangdong, except it wasn't whatever his overinflated ego might tell him otherwise. It was about the continent sized powder keg named East Asia. One accidental spark away from bringing it all down in flames China and Japan. China and Japan! Two stupid chickens squawking and posturing and practically begging for the hammer to fall. Once it does, hopes and dreams of the entire sphere all go tits up. Guangdong included, uh, very, very much included. Screw sustainability. Screw pan Asian fraternity. Screw you and your little fight to me, Bukamasu. You never mattered in the bigger picture, and you never will. The stream after ceases, stream of headlines were bearing their inky, inkly fangs at him, just as the riots had done then. They think all that was only three months ago. Maybe Guangdong was destined to perish after all. An evescent speck of dust, like those papers, like to whine so much about. Maybe he too was temporary. He took off his spectacles and stared and stared until he felt the fog return to his eyes and the ringing to his head, and then he chuckled. So what if he was temporary? He was the Book of Master, chief executive of the state of Guangdong, president of Fujitsu Limited, and before that, Tokyo Telecommunications. Sixty-five years of his own life he had lived, nineteen of which tethered to the patch of soil by the South China Sea. All might have been temporary, but it didn't matter. What matters is this place meant so much to him, and so long as it did uh, still, he darn well won't, won't surrender it to the whims of fate, not until he draws last breath. He clutched his pen once more, a spark flickering in his bare eyes. Guangdong had the right to live, to innovate, to explore, craft, and chase down his own destiny on his own terms, because it was born in this world, and so was he. Have you seen the news? It broke it up to uh, avoid ever being in this position again as he stared over the stack of Japanese and Chinese newspapers. Unfortunately, both electronic and political engineering were fields that demanded constant answers to unexpected problems, and so here he was again. But all the same, these were problems he had no excuse for not expecting. It had all been there in the papers for years now. The Japanese once but a clear as day between bouts of nationalistic bluster. The Chinese papers were somewhere close clear, if only for Ibuka's inexperience with Mandarin. And his differences from Cantonese, all the same, what he could read uh, left little doubt. Artificial, illegitimate, temporary, whatever was hidden behind the finer points of grammar and pronunciation. It was clear that China could no longer be ignored, and they had certainly not ignored Guangdong, indeed, it held a special place in their hearts. How could he just ignored this all? How much had he had missed while he was wallowing in self pity? Even as Koshu burned, this would not do. For all he knew, half the planet was bearing down cruise missiles upon the government complex right now. Two of the very weapons Guangdong had sold against them. What hidden disasters lurked, waiting to be to destroy them all for the hubris? After a brief moment of abject panic, he book a student himself. No. He was not a student discovering an unexpected question in the middle of an exam. He held vast economic power in the backing of a superpower, and a vision which, he could not, which no one could match. Could the Republic of China say the same? He grinned. Nothing had changed here and there. There was much work to be done then, and there was much work to be done now. The book I looked at the clock to find an ungodly hour staring back at him side, though. Time to get started. Setting ourselves up for Tino, too. Conscription. When Komaki Kinichiro caught on general Nagano Shigeto that evening in the Koshu, he was uncharacteristically anxious. Ordinarily, when confronted with such a phenomenon, Nagano might have inquired into it. Alternatively, if he was feeling particularly brutish about it, he would have asked the subject why such a womanish manner had been taken over him. But there's no room for such a thing as time. This for this thing, time. He understood too all, all darn well what Komai was up about arms. Look, General, I'm generally worried about the moves that Ibuka's pulling on us. He's been moving left, right, and center, cut off resource and personal ties from the rest of the sphere. He started off with the likes of Azad Hind and Hokkaido at this point. I was also concerned, to be honest. Who cares about those fools? Nagano scoffed. No one, but then what happened? Now the man started cutting out the rest of the sphere and masked with emphasis on Manchuria, with a double emphasis on Hitachi. And uh, that, the uh, general put his head in his hands. By the gods, and that's not all. Police and militia surveillance of our units are on the rise. The Camp Hotel doesn't feel safe moving on its own anymore. And those blasted technological monstrosities that Fujitsu calls security systems are doing double time to keep an eye on us. Komai sighed and shook his head, and this, as the conversation wandered off to the other topics, Nagano's mind kept working. This couldn't just be a revenge on Hitachi, surely. Perhaps this time, Ibuka's loyalty to the sphere's fear itself was in question. But what could he do? He, Tokyo was too busy to respond, and he could, himself couldn't take matters into his own hands after so recently vowing to stand down. What the heck is happening? What is he to do? As we're racing into the night. 
What if we had to fight both Japan and the Republic of China at the same time? We'd probably lose. Yeah. Yeah. Racing to the net, to all citizens of the state of Guangdong. I hear by now today that as chief executive and helmsman of the great nation we have built up together, the grim grimiest of the reality is lying in wait ahead of us, though oh, I believe that the news has already told you as much. We're alone, as we always have been. Our innovators, our brightest minds, everyone who we've done everything possible to prove our worth to this world, and what do we have to show for it? Nothing, as it turns out. China, simply put, wants our head on a pike. Manchuria remains blissfully in the bubble of fantasies, and even the home islands, our beloved home islands itself, has only proven a disappointment time and time again with its myopic acts and unsound decisions. War, let alone war on the scale of half a continent, will bring in nothing but ruin to everything we care about, and even this, it appears our friends up north and across the sea have become too blind to see. Such as the truth lay bare in front of our eyes, Guangdong is alone, alone in its rationality and enlightenment, and remains so far at least ten more years into the future, a future not of our own making, and I think it's time we came to terms with it. Forget all your hopes, forget all your expectations for the outside world, whatever you, those Mongols that do, they can do as they please, you have only yourself to trust because you yourself have earned it all. Even if the rest of this planet goes to heck, it will no longer have to do with us, and all we have left in this world are our own hands, our own dreams, our own shining and wavering path towards for us by Fujitsu that we shall tread for the rest of eternity for our sake and the sake alone because we or they don't deserve better we deserve better good night and so I set forth beyond doubt towards the things that come and concluded his choice oh it becomes really boring and thus ends the story of the Silicon Visionary and a striver for perfection for now so thank you for playing Guangdong we hope you enjoyed playing as much as we enjoyed making it so Ten generations after the creation of Adam, God saw the earth had been tainted beyond hope, so he called upon a flood that lasted forty nights and forty days, tearing down all that he created and making it anew. Of course, he broke the monster's nose. The detail was made up, but what on earth wasn't, anyway? Compassion, trust, morals, pan -Asianism. People constantly coming up with the most asinine resource reasons to validate what they do, be it throwing incendiary bombs into store pumps or going to war over arbitrary lines on the East Asian map. If made up things and made up stories are what humanity finds covered in, it's only fairy book indulges himself in the same, but too limited them. Is his arc. It's pristine, blue, white, Lights are his great flood, drowning out all the colors and voices from his head forever. It is 1973 now, 4,321 years since the great Noachian flood, and God willing, another was soon to come. So, well, oh, look at this house. But I do want to apologize once again to the dads. They do generally a great, fantastic job. There's just, sometimes there just might be a thing or issue too that really just ticks me off so much that I'm like, ah, I have to rage in a video. I normally don't try to rage in any sort of video like in the last one I did, but sometimes it just it just gets to you. I'm sorry. It just gets to me sometimes, and I apologize once again for being raging and just being so frustrated at things. I know I even took several breaks between each uh, the fade and fade outs, but like, man, when things th same thing happens again and again and again, it really sucks. But the devs generally do a fan freaking tastic job. I love what the devs have done. And even though the mechanic for the dismantling or negotiating with the GFT as well as CCL kind of sucks, because it can be very hard to dismantle. I'm glad it's there. I'd rather have it there than not have it there. So, and once again to the devs, I do apologize. But that's going to be then for us. At least for this part of the campaign. He's not too happy about what happened. He's on his own, but he's a sinner. Oh boy, look at that. He's a sinner. But aren't we all? Especially me. But, uh, I guess at this point, uh, we're going to next do probably one giant long episode that's going to test my patience to see what the reconciliation path is like for Ibuka Master. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like. Please consider uh, leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow. As, uh, oh, look at this. As we'll see, the possibilities are infinite um, with us basically being dominant across everything. Thanks for watching, and have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.